Let's take a look at a proposed deflected shape for a frame and see what we can find that are some positives and maybe some areas of improvement for this particular proposed deflected shape. Now let's go back uh, also real quick and review what these rules are for our first order model here, that we have moment curvature consistency, that we meet the boundary conditions, that original angles remain changed as well as member lengths remain the same. And when we take a look at what we've got here, this is a representation of a typical cantilevered highway sign. And although the load for right now doesn't seem like it would be typical of that kind of situation because the load looks as though it's acting up, you could of course think about a big heavy sign being posted at the end of this cantilever going the other direction. So everything we would see here in the response of the structure would be uh, in the real life might be opposite of what we've seen here. Right? And ultimately what we are going to do is here's this real situation we're looking at. Uh, we're going to look at the moment diagram and then we'll come back with an improved uh, qualitative deflected shape <clears throat> for this structure. Right? So when we think back to what the uh, some of the criteria are, we don't have the moment diagram yet so we'll, we'll skip the consistency with moment curvature but we can look at boundary condition right away. All right, so the only location of connection to the exterior world is down here at the base of this, and that's a fixed end. And we have no translations at the fixed end. And that would be in either the x or the y direction. So that's good. Although, unfortunately, what we do have is, though, we should have no rotation at the fixed end, which of course is at C in this particular one. So that, that's <coughs> at least two areas of strength and one area of improvement for the proposed deflected shape. Uh, let's look also at the original angles that the beam and the column are at 90 degrees in the original and in the proposed deflected shape then we also have it looks to be pretty close to a right angle as well so that would mean that angles remain the same as they were before loading so that's good and if we look uh, closely here it looks to me like joint B does not move up and down if it did move up and down, it would imply shortening of the column. So the column remains same length. Now, when we go look at the beam, the beam goes from A to B, and over here at B, B doesn't move left to right, up, down. So if that's the case, then A, when it displaces, should not move up and down. And it does look like there might be some very slight movement there so um, it's pretty close but I'd still say that that uh, the beam appears to have shortened and it really should not have so the beam AB should remain the same length okay let's see what else do we have here that that kind of addresses lengths and angles and the boundary conditions. There are a couple of <clears throat> other areas of improvement that we really want to take a closer look at. And that one of those is the moment curvature consistency. And for that, we've got to get into what that moment diagram would look like. So when we take a look at this cantilever segment here and we're pushing up, it's going to want to make this thing then arc upwards and the moment diagram that would go with that cantilever with that point load at the end of course would just be this linear increase in the moment and that would if this were P and I guess we've called it AY so we'll call it AY that would be AY times the length of AB would be the magnitude of that All right now if that was it, if that was the if the fixed end up was B, we'd be done. But that's not the end of it. Instead, we have then this flexible support that is the column BC. 
and then of course the rigid support down here so the BC the column BC serves as a support for the column AB <coughs> well that's going to turn out that we have to have a moment diagram that's going to be out there it's going to be of the same magnitude and that column is going to have uniform moment it will turn out so that will be AY AYL AB in terms of magnitude we can draw a quick three by diagram to help verify that that's what's going to be. Here's our joint B and in terms of the moments that's the only thing that we're going to draw here we'd have of course smiley face on the beam end and then smiley face coming back on the joint and we'll have to have an equal and opposing moment uh, that comes from column BC that would be MBA as opposed to MBC the notation meaning at the B end of member AB that comes first at the B end of member BC the order does actually matter not right now but it does matter in a big picture if we were to even be more careful about a complete free by diagram you know we come along here's that beam AB we would have the <coughs> opposed imposed force at the end we've got the shear flip the shear around there's the moment as well and there's no axial force there so now we come along if that shear is now acting uh, up there then over here we have to have an axial force now in the column so that means that we don't have any shear in the column itself which should make sense in the overall equilibrium right this reaction set down here would have a vertical and it would have a bending moment equal to AY times LAB and that's going to be AY that's exactly what we're showing here and so sure enough then we get a column that is in pure bending at that magnitude of AY LAB that MBC again equals AYLAB there is no shear there in the column right no shear DV D uh, rather DM DX equals V and V being shear then we have zero slope on the moment diagram there now that all tells us that we have curvatures that will look like this remember we're drawing these on the compression side of the member so compression there tension there compression there tension there and that means that the deflected shape should have curvature that looks more like so no shortening of the column then we sway to the right delta B is not zero and if B moves to the right that much then A also has to move to the right by the same amount right so that joint now has to rotate it stays at 90 degrees I use one of the little hash marks on my ruler to line that up I'm going to use a different ruler here so you can it's more translucent so you can see how I'm going to line that up to create that 90 degree construction line from which then I'll lay the French curve out to get then the curvature that has to extend out appropriately and it does get kind of large when we go all the way to the end and our deflected shape should look a lot more like that than what we've got uh, showing right and so what that tells us is that areas of improvement well we've got shown here reverse curvature in both of the beam in the column so we shouldn't have that area improvement should be that single curvature only oops, exists in a B and BC and we don't have that and <clears throat> note also this points out that we should have a translation that joints B and A 
should translate sideways and they don't. Right, so there's a lot of areas of improvement here that are need to, to go on to make this ready for calculations. Part of those calculations would involve understanding what this rotation here at this joint top joint B really is. That would be theta B and that when it turns the corner since that's a rigid joint and the angle remains the same then these two angles that I've just drawn are the same. That helps a great deal because of course that makes this little angle also theta B and it enables us to do things such as out here there's your tangential deviation of A with respect to B that's this portion that portion is then just going to be LAB times the tangent of theta B but remember that's such a small angle that we're going to use the small angle approximation just drew that tangent in there to make it easier to see so that's the same thing as LAB times theta B and that means that this displacement, this vertical displacement that happens out here at A, delta A, or V sub A if you like, delta A sub Y let's call it, is going to be equal to the sum of these two. That being TA with respect to B plus LAB theta B. Right? And so that just means we have to figure out how to get theta b, but that's going to be this cantilever portion that now is associated with the column. Right? And so theta b is going to be equal <coughs> to the relative angle change between a and b, or b and c. And since c is zero, that just means that's equal to theta b with respect to c. So that's a pretty straightforward one to play with. If we wanted to get delta B that would be just the tangential deviation of B with respect to C because of course we again we have that fixed end that we're working with there. Right? And that's how we would go back strategically uh, calculating some of these using the moment area method.